Hi everyone and welcome back to our daily crypto show. I'm Rosemary Miller and we have a lot to talk about. So you guys know Robinhood, the stock trading and investing app everyone uses. Well, they were just hit with a $30 million fine from the New York State Department of Financial Services. The penalty is for alleged violations of anti-money laundering and cybersecurity regulations in the department's first crypto enforcement action. As part of a consent order, Robinhood will retain an independent consultant to evaluate its compliance with the regulator's regulations and its remediation efforts. The agency said it found significant failures through a supervisory exam and through an enforcement investigation of Robinhood. The Wall Street Journal reports the failures tied to shortcomings in the company's management and oversight of its compliance programs. These include failures to foster and maintain a culture of compliance and to allocate adequate resources to the programs, especially as the company continued to grow. Robinhood sent Forbes a statement saying they were pleased with the settlement reached. As the crypto crackdown intensifies, the SEC charges 11 people tied to the alleged $300 million crypto global Ponzi scheme for Saj with fraud. Versage allows retail investors to enter into transactions via smart contracts on the Ethereum, Tron, and Binance blockchains in exchange for a payout when they recruit another investor. The SEC describes the business model as a textbook pyramid and Ponzi scheme. The company's four founders were charged, a group of five promoters who call themselves the Crypto Crusaders, and two YouTubers. The SEC's acting chief of crypto assets, Carolyn Welshen, says, as the complaint alleges, Versage is a fraudulent pyramid scheme launched on a massive scale and aggressively marketed to investors. Fraudsters cannot circumvent the federal securities laws by focusing their schemes on smart contracts and blockchains. The decentralized app became one of the most popular on Ethereum's blockchain and consumed around a quarter of the blockchain's bandwidth at its peak. Just last month, the SEC arrested three individuals, including a former product manager at Coinbase, in its first crypto insider trading case. Meanwhile, another key financial regulator, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, has pushed back against claims it cannot police digital markets. Forbes reporter Stephen Ehrlich sat down with the CFTC commissioner. But for the most part, the CFTC's principles-based framework is uh, technology neutral, which I do think is better. It means that the rules can be more evergreen. It means that they don't need to be updated all the time. And so that's just one example where I really see the ongoing digitalization and the growth in digital asset markets is almost very, very similar to the electronification of trading markets. There seems to be a new hack in crypto every single day. Nomad Protocol is the latest victim with attackers draining nearly all its funds in a $200 million hack. The cross-chain bridge allows cryptocurrencies designed for one blockchain to be used on another. The Nomad team wrote, an investigation is ongoing and leading firms for blockchain intelligence and forensics have been retained. The company also says it's notified law enforcement and is working around the clock to address the situation and recover the funds. Chainalysis data showed cross-chain bridge hacks and exploits have led to more than $1 billion worth of cryptocurrency being stolen in just over a year. The man who the popular show Billions is about pulls all of his money out of a crypto company. Billionaire hedge fund manager Steve Cohen exited his investment in crypto trading firm Radical. Cohen's planned investment in Radical was reported at the firm's inception last September. He was set to invest in a personal capacity before his departure. The future of Radical is now unclear as the managing directors Jim Gregco and Beatrice O'Carroll have both departed the company. Radical remains extremely well capitalized with its current investors and continues to grow rapidly, Bloomberg quoted in an email statement from the company. The New York State Attorney General put out a call for crypto whistleblowers on Monday after the crypto market was upended. State Attorney General Tish James is also urging investors who were deceived by crypto platforms to report their concerns to her office. On to the markets. Cryptocurrency prices are still trending downward today with the market cap still over 
$1 trillion. Bitcoin is just under 23,000, down almost 2% for the day. And Ethereum is around 1,500, down 5% for the day. As for our leaders and laggards, we have Nexo leading the day with a nearly 20% increase over the last 24 hours. For our laggards, we have Polkadot, down almost 8%. Today I had the pleasure of sitting down with Shahan Chandrasekhara about taxing crypto and how it could all change on January 1st. So I wanted to discuss your recent tax article with Forbes. And um, you, you mentioned the Infrastructure Act passed by the U.S. Congress in 2021 brought cryptocurrency exchanges under the controversial broker definition. So what, what's the controversy with the broker definition? Yeah, so <clears throat> crypto uh, currency exchanges have been operating in the U.S. for a while now, uh, but they haven't been reporting uh, information to the IRS like traditional brokerages like you know TD Ameritrade and J.P. Morgan. Um, so as a result, at the end of the year, cryptocurrency users haven't gotten any type of tax forms to file their taxes. Um, and those things have led to somewhat low compliance in the U.S., um, so the infrastructure bill passed in 2021, mandating cryptocurrency exchanges to follow the same rules uh, like brokerages, meaning whenever we do cryptocurrency transaction in exchange, the exchanges has to report that information to the IRS. And at the end of the year, I should also get a tax form from the crypto uh, exchange so I can file my taxes. Um, in industry didn't really like this initiative uh, because the crypto uh, the industry, you know, built on, you know, decentralized ethos um, and in, it didn't really fit into this space. Um, at the same time, this whole 1099B thing um, is not likely to work very effectively in the crypto space because of the nuances associated with crypto that right. we don't see in the, the stocks. Um, for example, in my article, I, I mentioned several situations where this 1099 thing could break. So say, for example, uh, you know, I have my self-custody asset in my ledger wallet, which is a very common thing uh, for crypto users uh, for, for long-term storage. I send that uh, coin from my ledger to a cryptocurrency exchange and I sell it there for, let's say, $50,000. Uh, the cryptocurrency exchange would report to the IRS that I sold something for $50,000, but they wouldn't know how much I paid for the coin. So they would naturally overstate my income in that scenario. That's just one example. But another example would be when I have like, you know, multiple wallets and exchanges, I would be transferring coins in and out of these exchanges and, and sell in one exchange. Again, exchange only has visibility into what's happening inside that exchange. Therefore, you could be missing out uh, important information like cost basis that's required to accurately calculate your taxes. Uh, so this is the whole controversy uh, uh, associated with 1099s and infrastructure bill. So, so how are cryptos, crypto and uh, NFTs, how are they currently being reported? Yeah, so uh, right now it's mostly self-reporting uh, uh, by self-reported by use, users of exchanges. Um, exchanges issue some type of, uh, like very you know, handful of exchanges use um, tax forms like 1099 miscellaneous and some, some of them use 1099Ks uh, in certain transactions. But to capture the capital gains and capital losses arising from like you know trading activities, uh, those type of information is not reported on any type of major tax forms uh, right now. Um, so to answer your question, there are some amount of tax forms that's being issued, but most of the uh, the users they are kind of you know self-reporting uh, their crypto activity. So if one is self-reporting, wouldn't that kind of open them up to misreporting? Yeah, I mean, self-reporting uh, could open them up to, like I said, misreporting. Um, and there are a lot of taxpayers uh, who are uneducated about tax filings at all. So they they would do transactions in an exchange, but they would not even know they have something to report. Um, it all can also lead to in inaccurate uh, reporting as well, because the calculation of these, you know, cost base is tracking that those are like, you know, not easy for the average taxpayer. Um, it could also lead to very expensive uh, fees that you had to pay for tax professionals because again you had to reconcile all that activity. Um, yeah, so that's what's happening around. This is okay. All right, and, and uh, you probably touched on this: the the consequences of misreporting or 
not not reporting properly and like why why would someone suffer consequences when there really aren't any strict rules or guidelines in place for reporting your crypto yeah <laughs> yeah the guidelines are there so the since to cyrus first introduced the crypto guidelines in 2014 and they came up with another set of guidance in 2019 uh, the guidance is there, but the, the calculation piece is uh, very difficult for the average taxpayer, um, unless they're in the weeds of crypto, unless they have access to like a really sophisticated accountant. Uh, I have to say that there are, you know, certain type of crypto tax software that come into the picture and kind of help these people reconcile uh, crypto activity. But again, crypto is, is a very complicated subject um, and a lot of people are not even aware of these type of software exists because they're kind of used to that stocks and brokerage type of mental models. So at the end of the year, you get this tax form and you file your taxes. But in crypto, you don't get a tax form and a lot of people default to not filing because of that. And what change, What changes do you expect to occur on January 1st? Yeah, so uh, according to the infrastructure bill, uh, effective January 1st, 2023, exchanges uh, have to report this information to the IRS. And 2024 Q1, in, for that tax season, uh, you will likely get a tax form from some of these exchanges uh, who report your activity for that 2023 year. Um, so if things go according to the timeline, um, the 2023 taxes uh, will be somewhat easier if you are a single exchange user, meaning you're you're somebody who has just one exchange uh, where you do all the trades and uh, where, where you do all the trades. Um, in that case, you would get that tax form and you would follow the tax form the 1099 and, and you could file your taxes. However, if you are a multi-exchange user, uh, which is where the world is heading, right? Because a typical user has, you know, three to five exchanges and wallets. <laughs> um, it's by nature of this space. In that case, you will still have to kind of go through some hassle and you have to use some type of crypto tax software to reconcile your activity across multiple wallets and exchanges to come up with your true taxable capital gain or capital loss. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Forbes Crypto and feel free to send me any tips at Rosemary TV.